In this video, I want to give you a basic introduction into domain and range and how to write the expression using interval notation given the graph of a function. So what is the domain and range of this particular function? Now the domain tells you the x values of the function. The range tells you the y values of the function. So let's focus on the domain first. What is the lowest x value of the function? The lowest x value, as seen here, is negative 4. The highest x value is 3. And this function contains every x value in between negative 4 and 3. So in interval notation, we could say that the domain is from negative 4 to 3. And we're going to use brackets because it includes negative 4 and 3. So that's how you can write the domain for this particular function. Now, what about the range? What's the range of this particular function? Well, let's focus on the y values. The lowest y value that we see, this is negative 5. Now, the highest y value is 4. And there's no breaks in the graph. This graph is continuous from negative 5 to 4 along the y-axis. So therefore, the range is going to be negative 5 to 4. And so that's a simple way to determine the domain and range of a function using a graph. Now go ahead and try that example. Find the domain and range of the function. So let's start with the x values. The lowest x value is at negative 6. And the highest, we could see, is positive 6. Now notice that we have an open circle at negative 6, so negative 6 is not included. So I'm going to use the parentheses for that. So it's going to be negative 6 to 6. But here we have a closed circle, so that's going to be associated with a bracket. And so that's the domain for this particular function. Now what about the range? So let's focus on the y values. The lowest y value occurs at negative 4. And the highest y value occurs at 5. But negative 4 is not included. So it's going to be negative 4 to 5. But 5 is included. So that's the range for this particular function. Go ahead and try this example. What's the domain and range of that function? So let's start with the x values. The lowest x value is 1. Now notice we have an arrow. So this goes all the way to infinity. So therefore, the domain is going to be from 1 to infinity. Now how about the range? The lowest y value is 2. And because of this arrow, it's going to go up and to the right indefinitely. So therefore, the highest y value technically is infinity, because this doesn't end. So the range is going to be from 2, let me write that better, 2 to infinity. And 2 is included because we have a closed circle. Now, here's the next example. We have a downward parabola. And how can we determine the domain and range of it? So let's start with the x values. So once again, we have an arrow. That means it's going to go down as it slowly goes to the left. So it's going to keep going to the left forever. And we have an arrow on the right side, so it keeps going to the right side forever. So therefore, the lowest x value, because it goes all the way to the left, is negative infinity. And because it goes all the way to the right, the highest of x value is positive infinity. So the domain is going to be negative infinity to infinity. Always use a parenthesis symbol next to an infinity symbol. Now let's focus on the range, the y values. The lowest y value, we can clearly see that it's a negative infinity because it keeps going down forever. But the highest y value is 3. It never goes beyond 3. So the range, starting from the lowest value to the highest value, is negative infinity to 3, including 3. And so that's how you can determine the domain and range of a parabola. Now let's try some harder examples. If you want to, pause the video and work on this one. So let's start with the domain. 
let's focus on the x values. So the lowest x value is negative 6. The highest x value is 5. And notice that there's a jump in the graph at negative 1. However, x can be negative 1. So x could be anything between negative 6 and 5 except negative 6 because we have an open circle at negative 6. But it can be negative 1 because we do have a closed circle at negative 1. So the domain for this one is going to be negative 6 to 5 because it could be any x value between negative 6 and 5, just not negative 6. Now what about the range? What about the y values? So the lowest y value that we see is negative 4. And the highest is positive 4. Now notice that there's nothing between negative 1, I mean negative 2 and 1. So y can't be anything between there. It could be negative 2 though, because we do have a closed circle at negative 2. But it can't be negative 1, negative 0 0.5, 0 0.8. It can't even be 1 because we have an open circle at 1. So how can we describe the range using interval notation in this example? What we need to do is we need to use the union symbol that will connect the range of this expression with the range of this expression, omitting everything in between since there's nothing there. So we're going to go in this direction from the low value to the high value. So the lowest value, the lowest y value that is, is negative 4. And we need to use parentheses because we have an open circle. So it goes from negative 4 to negative 2. Now we have a closed circle at negative 2, so we're going to use brackets. And then union, so this is for the first graph. So let's connect it to the second part of the graph. We're going to start back up at 1 and end at 4. Now, 1 is not included. We have an open circle, but we have a closed circle at 4, so 4 is included. And so this represents the range of this particular function. So hopefully this makes sense to you. And the best way to learn this is to do a few examples. So this is going to be the last example for this video. Go ahead and determine the domain and range. Let's see if you understand how to do it now. So let's start with the x values. The first x value of interest is at negative 8. The next x value that I want to take note of, which ends this portion of the graph, that's at negative 4. And then the second part of the graph starts back up at negative 2, and it ends at 5. Now the third part of the graph, it starts back up again at 7, and then we have an arrow, so it goes to infinity. So basically, these numbers that we see here, we just have to use that to write the domain. So the lowest x value, it starts at negative 8, and it includes negative 8. And then it stops at negative 4, but it does include negative 4, so let's use parentheses. Union, now for the second part of the graph, it starts at negative 2, and it includes it, and it stops at 5 and it doesn't include 5. And then union, it starts back up at 7 and then ends at infinity. So that's the domain for this particular graph. Now let's focus on the y values, the range. So let's focus on this one. The lowest value that I see here is negative 6. Now this is not the highest value of this function, so I'm not going to worry about it. The highest value is here, which is at 1. So this graph includes everything from negative 6 to 1. Notice that this open circle is not relevant. It's not equal to negative 4 at this point, but it is equal to negative 4 at this point. If you draw a, a horizontal line, notice that there's two possible locations at which it can equal negative 4. Here, and here. It doesn't equal negative 4 here, but it does equal negative 4 here. So y can be negative 4. So we have everything from negative 6 to 1. Now let's focus on this one. 
I don't need to worry about this point because it's already included in this graph. The highest y value here is 2. So notice that y could be anything from negative 6 to 2. It could be 1 here and here. So I don't need to worry about this one. Now notice that there's nothing between 2 and 5. There's no graph in this region. So that's where I need a union. Now the highest y value is going to be infinity because of the arrow. So these are the points of interest. So the range is going to be negative 6 to 2. It does include 2. And then union 5, it does include 5, to infinity. Now, if this section confuses you, here's what you can do. Now let's focus on these two parts separately. Let's say if we want to write the range of each one separately. The first one, just this portion, is going to be negative 6 to 1, and it includes 1. Now the second part is going to be, this starts at negative 3, by the way, and it stops at 2. Now, if we want to find the union between these two expressions, or these two sets represented in interval notation, what would it be? The union of those two is going to be negative 6 to 2. Let's say if we drew a number line. Here's negative 6, here's 1. And then for the second one, this is going to be negative 3, and this is going to be 2. So here's the first one, negative 6 to 1. And here's the second one, negative 3 to 2. So if we combine those two into one number line, if we found a union between them, it's going to look something like this. It's going to start at negative 6, in a different color, and then it's going to stop at 2, which gives us this expression. So what you could do is find a range for each portion of the graph separately, and then just find a union for anywhere they overlap and that would still give you the range. Or if you could see it graphically, I would just do it the first way. But that's it for this video. Thanks again for watching.